Let's do some sunset color grading for this mountain landscape scene and restore those awesome, warm and vibrant colors in the sky using a little bit of Lightroom editing. As always, you can follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So that's our long exposure RAW file opened up in Lightroom. You can see it's super dark and has a very strong blue color cast. And with the basic adjustments, we can fix a lot of things. So let's get started right here. First off, let me also say I did crop the image quite a bit, taking away a chunk from the top and from the left side as well. I might also take away a little bit from the right just to balance the image a little more so the Matterhorn is right here in the center. With that out of the way, how can we make this exposure look better? First off, I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will give the image immediately more saturation. And for this scene, I do have a very, very vibrant look in mind. So the Adobe Landscape profile is the perfect solution for that. Also, we can right away take out that ugly blue color cast by working on the white balance. And this is a great way of restoring sunset colors. Just watch what happens when I bring up the temperature and as we raise it, the sky looks much more beautiful. I actually don't want to raise it that much. Let's tone it down a little bit, but right around here is where I'm happy with. I think we can make those sunset colors a little more intense by playing around with the tint, introducing some magenta on this image. But here with the tint slider, I'm always very, very careful because you can easily overdo it like this. So let's not do that. I think somewhere around plus 12 is fine here. Now the colors do look very good already. What we want to do next is to adjust the exposure. What we can do first is to bring up the general exposure a little bit just to tickle out some details from the shadows. But I think a better way to do that is to simply raise the shadows slider like this. And thanks to the raw files of modern day cameras, we can get quite a lot of details out of unexposed scenes like this. Speaking of unexposure, looking at Instagram, you can see we do have a clipping warning right here in the shadows. So we want to try to fix that by bringing up the blacks. And right at this point, the end exposure is gone. This does have another benefit because by bringing up the blacks, we're taking out some contrast of the image. And in turn, this will help creating a softer, kind of dreamy, glowing look. And if you have been watching some of my videos, you know I really, really love that effect. So that's perfect. Now, I'm happy with the darker areas, uh, but I'm not happy with the sky because I think it's a, just a little bit too bright. So I want to bring down the highlights to fix that. So right around here looks fine. Wonderful. Then let's raise the texture. This will sharpen the image basically. I'm also going to add a bit of clarity. This will boost the mid-tones contrast. And for the soft look, I'm going to bring down the dehaze very, very gently, which is almost like an Alton Glow slider in my opinion. So I really love negative dehaze for that glow effect. Okay, now we're almost done with the basic adjustments. What we're missing at this point is some vibrance to make this image more colorful. And we can also bring up the saturation just a little bit right around here. Perfect. Now that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before and you can see a huge, huge difference thanks to the adjusted white balance and the adjusted exposure. But we can improve this image quite a bit more with masking. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And I do think I want to start working on the sky. So what I want to do here is to make the lower part of the sky warmer and kind of more saturated while the upper part of the sky will become darker. And I also plan on introducing some more cold blue tones in the upper half of the sky. So let's start with something simple. Let's create a sky selection mask. Since you have a super hard edge between the landscape and the sky, you can see Lightroom has an easy time targeting the sky in this case. 
as I said, I want to target the lower half of the sky. So we don't want to affect the whole sky the same way. This means we want to adjust this mask selection. So I'm going to say subtract and I'm going to subtract with a linear gradient. Now I'm taking out all the things above this point right here. And we could maybe tilt it a little bit so there's more selected on the right side than on the left. Now what I want to do with, with this selection is I'm simply going to raise the white balance temperature and this in turn will make the lower part of the sky way warmer. That looks beautiful. Of course, this will add a very intense yellow tone. So we can further adjust this by clicking on this little color box right here. And we can set up a color tone to be added on top. So I'm going to set up a very warm hue somewhere in the orange range right here. And then we need to change the saturation. So right here would be 0% saturation, but of course we want to bring it up. So we have an visible effect in here. I'm going to raise it quite a bit, somewhere around 40%. Wonderful. Now that's looking pretty good. Let's continue with the sky. I'm going to create another linear gradient coming down from the top. And, and that's where we are going to add some more darkness. I'm going to bring down the exposure very gently. And let's also bring down the blacks to make this area even darker. And then instead of bringing up the white balance temperature, I'm going to bring it down, introducing some cold tones but I'm just using tiny, tiny amounts here to not overdo it. This is perfect. For now, I'm quite happy with the sky. Let's also work on the landscape. For that, I'm going to create a sky selection first. This might seem weird, but we can simply invert that selection. And this way, as you can see, we get a perfect mask for the landscape in the foreground. What I want to do in here is to make everything brighter. So let's raise the exposure just a little bit and this really helps to bring out details from the darkest areas of the image. Now I'm also going to create a linear gradient for the foreground like this, pretty much only for the lake in the foreground. I'm going to make sure it has a soft edge right here and I'm going to further brighten up this area by slightly increasing the exposure and I'm also going to slightly raise the shadows. Just a tiny bit, otherwise this might be visible right along this edge right here. So that's really important. Okay, then let's work a little bit on the reflection. I'm going to use a radial gradient targeting the Matterhorn reflection right here in the lake. And what I want to do is to make it a little sharper. So I'm going to add some texture. At the same time, I want to bring down the clarity, kind of making the water a little more blurry. Just a little bit. I think this has a nice effect on it, but you could also increase the clarity if you want to make the reflection pop like this. However, in this case, let's bring it down a little like that. Wonderful. At this point, let me introduce some glow. I'm going to use another radial gradient for that. And I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to align it with the mountains in the back. And I'm also making sure it's overlapping the mountains and the sky like this. And I want to add another radial gradient right away to this mask, which is for the reflection in the water like that. Pretty much the same spot, maybe a little smaller. So how do we add this glow effect? That's again really, really simple. We're going to raise the blacks. All right. And since we are targeting very dark areas in the distance right here with those mountains, raising the blacks will make those areas brighter without affecting the bright sky. And that's how we can create this glow effect. If you want to make it stronger, we can always bring down the dehaze, which will make the glow e effect way more intense. So let's bring it down a little like that. Wonderful. Uh, let's see, then I also want to target the Matterhorn itself. I want to make it pop a little more. So I'm going to use a radial gradient and I'm covering its peak like this. Of course, we don't want to affect the sky. So I'm going to say subtract and choose select sky. This will give us a perfect selection for the Matterhorn. And what I'm going to do here is to bring up the clarity a lot. 
and this will help add structure to the mountain and I'm also going to add some contrast. Maybe let's make the radial gradient a little bigger, but this is looking great. So we're almost done with the masking. Just one more thing I want to do. I want to add one more linear gradient for the top part like that. Make it really, really soft in here. And I want to make it even darker up here by bringing down exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a lot here. And I'm also going to bring down the blacks. And I think I even want to bring down the temperature a little. Okay, this looks great. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let's compare to before with the basic adjustments and here with the masking added on top. Looks much nicer, but the colors are still lacking at this point. We do have a very nice warm color tone behind the mountain landscape in the back. However, we can improve it some more with a bit of targeted color grading. So let's open up the color mixer and I do want to start with the hue. What I don't like about the sky is its yellow hue. So we can change it in the HSL panel by targeting yellow and orange. This means when I bring down the yellow hue, we can make the yellow of the sky appear to be more orange. And that's exactly what I want to do because it just has a nicer look to it. I'm also going to bring down the orange hue for the same effect. So right around here looks great. Now let's head over into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the main colors of the image, or let's say the main warm tones of the image, red, orange, and yellow. So let's raise red, orange, and let's raise yellow. Here you want to be really, really careful because it's quite easy to, ex uh, to accidentally introduce banding in the sky. Let me give you an example. As I bring up the red saturation, you can see that thin line appear in the sky. So you want to be really, really careful and you want to avoid that by not going too crazy with these sliders. Now, I think this area is still a little bit too bright. What I can try to, to fix that is to head into the luminance tab and slightly bring down the yellow luminance. Just a little bit, but I think this looks great. And then let's do some split toning in the color grading panel. And here we can go really, really crazy stylizing this image to our liking. So I want to start with the highlights. And obviously for the highlights and the midtones, I want to keep the image warm. So I'm going to apply a warm color tone to those areas. So with the highlights, set up the hue. I'm going with somewhere around here in the orange range again because I like this color tone and I'm going to really pump up the saturation. This is looking great. Now we get this really, really intense sunset color tone. Let's improve this further by going into the midtones and again set up the hue to something warm right around here and let's bring up the saturation. With the midtones, I usually don't go as high with, as with the highlights. Something lower like this looks fine. Now to add some color contrast, I'm going to head into the shadows. And for the hue, I'm choosing a cold color tone. This adds some very nice color balance between warm and cold. So set up the hue like this and let's bring up the saturation just a little bit. This should be more than enough. All right. Now, what I'm noticing at this point is you can see some very, very nasty chromatic aberration along the edge of the mountains right here. We can really easily fix that going into the lens correction step and just click remove chromatic aberration. Just like that, it's pretty much gone. Now back to the color grading. Let's also add into the calibration tab. And I want to work on the blue primary hue and saturation, bringing down the hue slider quite a bit which will make the warmer tones a little more intense, but it will also turn the blue color tones more into a cyan color range. Then let's bring up the saturation some more. Now we're done with the color grading. What I want to do as well, of course, is some sharpening in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking while holding down the Alt key, just like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. 
So that is the finished image after just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments. Now I still want to clean up this image and I do think I want to do some time blending with a second image. So with this one being edited, I also want to use this image to add some stars to the sky of our previously edited image. You can see I already have adjusted this image very, very slightly just to boost the visibility of the stars in the sky. With that out of the way, let me select both these images, then right click, add it in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now, obviously those two images are not shot from the same perspective because I wasn't planning on doing any time blending, but we can still do this. So I'm going to use that stars layer and bring down the opacity and I'm going to try to align it with the underlying layer like this. Of course, you could also select both layers, go to edit and choose auto align layers. However, in my experience, this does not work with this particular image. So I'm doing it manually. Let me just be a little more precise here. Fun fact, you can actually see some climbers going up the Matterhorn right here. Now the scaling is still a little off as you can see on the right side with those mountains, but I think it doesn't need to be perfect. I just want to add some of these stars on top of the empty sky. So I'm going to bring back the opacity to 100% and then to blend these two images, we need to change the blending mode to lighten. So that is looking really, really good. Let me crop the image. So we only are left with the main layer like this. And now there are a few things I want to mask out from that stars layer. So let's apply a layer mask. And with the black brush, I'm going to brush out this light on the, on the left. And I want to brush out this light right here. And maybe those planes as well. Okay, and that is looking really, really good. Let's merge everything hitting Control Shift Alt E. And then it's time to clean up some things. For example, this cloud right here is driving me insane. So I'm going to use the clone stamp tool right next to it. And I'm just trying to brush it away. Perfect. Then we do have a lot of sensor spots, which I'm cleaning up by using the spot healing brush. All right. That looks great. And finally, if you want, we could add a little more glow. So let's do that, create a new layer and change the blending mode to hard light. Then grab the brush by pressing B. I'm picking up a color from right here in the sky. And let's bring down the brush opacity to 10%. And now I'm just going to paint over these mountains here, adding this really good looking glow effect. All right, and here we have it. So that's the image after all the color grading and Photoshop. I hope this little tutorial was interesting. If you have any questions left or if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.